Welcome back again. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and the topic for today's video is the Smith chart and nothing but the Smith chart, which I hope you find interesting. This video will use Sim Smith, but the focus is on the Smith chart, and Sim Smith is just a mechanism to achieve that. Long before computers, the electronics and RF industry needed better ways to graphically analyze circuits. Two of the results in the 1930s were the Bode plot and the Smith chart, which were both inventions from Bell Laboratories, who happened to be my first employer out of college. Looking at the four graphs here in the picture, we see in the upper left a plot, a linear plot of power versus frequency. Now, frequency is on a log scale, but that doesn't really matter. From this graph, you might draw the conclusion that frequencies above this point right here, about 30 megahertz, have essentially no amplitude. However, if we plot this on a log scale, we see that clearly frequencies above 30 megahertz have amplitude and it's continuously decreasing. We make a modification to a plot like this in the voltage, that's plotting voltage, current, or power, often to see more resolution in areas with, that we consider to be important. There's no more information in this graph than there is in this graph. If you drew this line with a fine enough pencil and you had large enough magnifying glass, the same information is on this graph as is on, as is on this graph. However, this gives you a more intuitive feel for what's actually going on. Similarly, and I use Sim Smith to create this plot, by the way. Uh, similarly, if you would like to plot impedance, impedance is a complex number. And... As such, we need two graphs, one for the real part, which is the blue graph, and one for the imaginary part, which is the pink graph, and we plot those against frequency. This graph is extremely difficult to look at and see what represents a good or a bad match to a certain impedance. Consequently, the Smith chart was invented, and we know from the Smith chart that areas near the center of the Smith chart are good, provided we've put the, the center of the Smith chart at the appropriate place. And areas far away are not nearly as good as far as getting power transfer to our circuit. So again, the, the information in this graph and the information in this graph are exactly identical. However, this one is much more intuitive. Here we have a Smith chart, which has five points plotted on it. One in the center at 50 plus J0, and four more around the outside at the compass points which represent 10,000 to 1 SWRs, effectively an infinite impedance, a zero ohm, ohm impedance, an impedance that is zero plus J50, and one that's zero minus J50, and of course the center is a 50 ohm point. And we can look through those and see what see that the point number one has a 10,000 to 1 SWR, so does number two, so does number three, and so does number four. And that's all there are, just these five points. Now, if we look at these points closely, while I move the center of the Smith chart, we'll see some interesting things happen. So here we have a 50 ohm center point. If I move this center point to say 30, 33 ohms, 33 ohms is, or 32.8 ohms is the center of the Smith chart now. This point didn't move, this point didn't move, these points begin to rotate around this direction. Likewise, if I increase the center point impedance. We see those points starting to, the, the two points at the top and the bottom, we see them start to rotate over here in this direction. Now, you may not think much of that, but what we're seeing is we're starting to see the compression of the entire range of all the impedances. The Smith chart has, in a finite circle, all the impedances that, are, that there are, all real impedances. Up through infinity, this point right over here is, is basically infinity. This point here is pretty much zero, um, with the way I plotted. I could have plotted him right at zero. I didn't. I just made him a 10,000 to 1 SWR. But we can look at this a little more closely if we add more points to this. And it becomes kind of interesting if we do. Continuing with the example we had before, except that instead of having five points, I have 331 points. These points were generated by, by SimSmith. I put them into a file and I brought them back. They represent impedances. They don't vary with frequency. I can move this around. They don't vary with frequency. Um, 
and they're hard-coded impedance values. So we can see what happens if we move the center point of, this, of the Smith chart. The spacing of these points is designed to be roughly equal. I mean, they're, it's not exactly equal. And I can keep adding more points if I want, but this is pretty reasonable. I and mean, a person would look at this and say, yeah, they're pretty evenly spaced. So now let's look what happens as I start to change the impedance. We start to see a, um, these get, are getting a little more spread out and these are getting a little more compressed. Let's continue on. We'll get down here somewhere around 20 ohms. At 20 ohm point, we see a lot more of those points that we thought that were equally spaced all over in this area now. And that's because this now is, is the center of our focus. We could, what we're concerned about is all the points around here being an equal amount away from this point from, fa from a performance point of view uh, for power transfer and things like that. We can, do, we can go back this direction on the opposite way and see the same thing. We make the impedance here a little bit less than 200 ohms. We see a compression over on this side. All the 331 points are still in this circle, still comprised within this circle, but there are a lot more of them over here now. So we start to see that it's important if we have a circuit that runs at a certain impedance that we get the center of the Smith chart approximately where we want to be. And I'm getting ready to make a point with this, but um, the new version of SimSmith 16.3 allows complete independent control of where we put the center of the Smith chart versus what impedance we use for the generator versus what impedance we might use for the load. And that's kind of cool, um, to say the least. But uh, this is kind of an interesting, um, interesting little experiment. Another thing that we can do, and let's go back to 50 ohms for a moment here, is I said I wasn't going to do talk much about uh, SimSmith, but uh, let me do a real quick, real quick little example here. Um, there's a, a new variable called Z Center, Z C E N. And if you use that value, it, it goes down here, and this is no longer the center of the Smith chart. So we can make this be, say, uh, 50 plus J20. And now that's the center of the Smith, the Smith chart. Now we see all these points that we had. This whole area is not used anymore. It's kind of interesting. This, this area represents, um, well, we click up here and see what we get. This actually represents a value which has a negative real, real impedance and a negative real part to the impedance. And down here, these values have positive real parts to the impedance. This is a little bit difficult to understand, and I may not be explaining this very well, but we can put SWR circles on this Smith chart. I did 1.52 and 3 to 1 right there. They're centered around this point right now. They're centered around the center. There's another ver new variable that's appearing called ZSWR, and there's also one called ZGen. Um, they're, they're in the documentation. But if we make our ZSWR point be 50 ohms, we can move, this is the, this is the point that was 50 plus J0 right here. And these are the circles. What we start to see, as we move the center point of the Smith chart, no matter how we move it, SWR circle, SWR, constant SWR plots remain circles. They don't remain centered on this point, um, but uh, they're, they're still circles. So if we move the center point, say make it back zero again, and we move it up here, If we were concerned about 4.4 ohm center of the Smith chart, this would be the range of impedances around here that would be good in terms of getting good power transfer in and out of a circuit that was this impedance. This circle still represents 50 ohm impedance right here. 
and these represent the SWR circles around, around, around that 50 ohm impedance. This is a little bit harder to, to make to understand. So consequently, if you had this um, case in the, in the Smith chart, you would really want to move this point over to the center. This is where the action is that you care about. And let me do an example to show that. Here we have 61 data points, which represent a wide range of impedances of 3 to 1 SWR or less in a 50 ohm system. And we're going to use these just these these 61 dots here to show where they get mapped to when we do a design. We're going to take a vacuum tube amplifier which has a nominal 2500 ohm output impedance and as soon as we do that Sim Smith sets that to be the, the impedance that we want to look at as far as being our central point. All those impedances over here have moved that at the 50 ohm point have moved over to here and we're going to put a matching network in here which is going to match between the vacuum tube and the 50 ohm point which is right there. Now if we look at this we can certainly if we want to um, move the SWR circles over near over here and zoom in and this is what we see. So this is case one that we would have. And we would get this skewed distortion in the, um, in the impedances. Notice how there's, they're much more clustered over in this area due to the compression of the uh, Smith chart. And what you would do is you would sweep these values and you'd see what range you got for impedances over here. And that can be done now in uh, the new version of Sim Smith without doing a reverse circuit, which is very nice. But what we see here is something completely different than what we would see if we did it with the center of the Smith chart being centered about here. We can do that by going over here, setting the center of the Smith chart to be 50 ohms, which was already in this variable from before. And now here's the points I have. We've made the focus of the Smith chart be the load impedance rather than the generator impedance. And when we, when, we, when we had this, when this variable doesn't exist, it, go, it re, uh, reverts to this value. We could also put 2500 into here too. So here we've made the center of the Smith chart's focus be the generator with the load being not nearly as important. And here we've made the load be important. Now, Granted, we can if the load was not 50 ohms and it was 50 plus something, we could we could move this up and down to a little bit if we wanted to. Um, realizing that the Smith chart, if we move the center point to be anything other than other than resistance, we end up with some real values of impedance being outside of the Smith chart. Um, typically, you don't do that, but but Sim Smith allows you to do that, and that's perfectly legal. But the point I wanted to make was we get this, this huge compression in the values. And my first experience with the Smith chart was when I was a little kid. My grandfather was a double E professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And I, he always had graph paper in his office. And I always, when we came to visit them on Saturday night and had dinner with them, uh, I would always go up and get graph paper because it was always fun to write on graph paper because it was kind of cool. And this is regular you know, XY graph paper. But he had this tablet that had Smith chart paper on it, and I always asked him what it was, and he always told me it was too complicated to explain. And one time he made a comment to me that if I took my regular graph paper and I put a magnifying glass in the middle of my graph paper, that's kind of what the Smith chart was. And I kind of, that kind of remembered that for the rest of my life. Um, it's, and that's kind of what happens in a Smith chart. You take all the impedances there are in the universe, all real impedances, and you magnify this area so that these become more important. And that's kind of the power of the Smith chart. But um, if you operate it inappropriately for, in the case of this, it's inappropriate, putting everything over on the side here, we don't see, we number one, don't see the spatial, I mean, all these points were equally spaced in a 50 ohm, in a 50 ohm environment, and they appear to be not nowhere close to being equally spaced over here. So you get to draw conclusions in your circuit that may not be quite correct. 
So the new power SimSmith being able to move this move the center point around, being able to move the SWR circles anywhere you want, is really powerful. But it comes about from the desire to have the center of the Smith chart be where the focus of the circuit design really is. Hope this video has been interesting to people. Um, this stuff's kind of complicated. It's a lot of fun, and when you get it right and you look at it in the right manner, uh, you can glean a lot about how a circuit works. And when you get it wrong, it's you know it, it, you're kind of like fumbling around, and you kind of wonder, you know, you don't you don't see it. And that's the that's the beauty of doing this. Um, hope everyone's appreciated. You know the 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 value of the Smith chart. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you don't like it. Also, if you'd like to know how I created some of these dots and stuff like that in SimSmith, I can do a video on that topic, but that wasn't the purpose of this video. Um, just let me know. Thank you very much.